Today, there are nearly 200 BC liquor stores across the province. But back when Prohibition came to an end in 1921, there were just nine government stores. It's safe to say it was a soft launch of take-home legal booze. It wasn't up until the 1950s that we had a cocktail lounge that was legalized in Vancouver. After the Prohibition, what happened was is that they basically allowed drinking to happen in uh, beer halls. And beer and then spirits, rum, whiskey, gin and vodka were gradually legalized. Even during Prohibition, alcohol was never more than a doctor's note away. There were um, medical prescriptions. You could go to your doctor and for about 50 cents you could get basically all the alcohol you wanted. Some believe the same approach could be used with drugs. Maybe you could buy uh, uh, something over, like co cocaine or a cocaine derivative over the counter from a pharmacist. The anniversary gives her hope that other illegal substances won't always be so heavily restricted. They ended prohibition, alcohol prohibition, at the end of that epidemic, uh, at the end of the 1918-21 epidemic, which is a remarkable uh, parallel, uh, after realizing how much harm prohibition does. Uh, to, to, uh, to, to society at large. In BC, more than 7,000 people have died from overdoses after using toxic drugs in the last five years. Thousands also died during prohibition from drinking denatured alcohol or moonshine. Ward believes it's hypocritical to criminalize certain drugs when other substances like alcohol and coffee are commonplace. Regulation, legalization can involve, um, you know, safe consumption rooms. I mean, a bar is essentially a safe consumption site. Uh, uh, for, for alcohol. Back in 1921, it would have been unthinkable that the government would one day sell legal weed as well as legal booze. Advocates hope BC is ready to take its next step towards decriminalization. Eva Yuguen Senj, CBC News, Vancouver.